Let's go from concepts together. Grid containers, grid items, basic usage, advanced usage, and grid responsive. Recently, I posted a video showing people how to quickly react between choosing grid or flex in specific situations. We have received many comments suggesting that we should create a more detailed video about the grid. I always want to support everyone to the best of my ability. So we have this video. When working with grids to edit layouts, many people think that grids in CSS are very similar to Flexboxes. However, in reality, the module most similar to grid is HTML's table. Both of these modules use columns and rows to arrange the internal layout. However, grid has much more power because it has the ability to move elements wherever they want and more optimized in the responsive process. Now, let's join LunDev to learn about grid. When working with grids in CSS, we will have a concept called grid container. Refers to the parent element that wraps the items inside. This element is responsible for creating a grid model with columns and rows. Here, I create a container class that takes on this role, CSS side. Declare display grid. To manage the number of rows, I have the grid template rows property. Declaring as many values will correspond to creating as many rows. For example, here I will create three rows. Each row has a height value of 100 pixels. The fourth row has a size of 50 pixels, similar to how we created the line. We can also create columns with grid template columns. I will create three columns, each 100 pixels large. So the grid has been created. In some cases, you want to manage the remaining excess space. Then we can easily handle it with fraction units. If the fourth column has a value of one fraction, the remaining space will become the fourth column. In case there is more than one column with fraction units, for example, here I create the fourth and fifth columns both with a value of one fraction. So the remaining space will be divided equally between these two columns. In addition, during the process of declaring columns and rows, to help make the code more concise and easier to see, in adjacent columns and rows with the same value, you can use the repeat function. For example, I can declare the repeat function with the first parameter being 3, the second parameter being 100 pixels to create 3 rows of 100 pixels. The same thing will happen with columns. And that's how the grid container creates the grid model. Apply what just mentioned. Then, if I want to create a 5x5 five five grid, I will use the repeat function to create 5 rows of 100 pixels each and again use the repeat function to create five columns of 100 pixels each. Grid items is the concept used to refer to the items inside the grid container, and it is also the content of the website that we need to arrange. Notice our mesh model, it is created and has many quadrilaterals inside. Each quadrilateral will represent the default position of each item, arranged in order from left to right. For example, if I create the first item, this item will be located right in the position of the first quadrilateral. Then the second and third items, the following items will gradually fall into the positions of the remaining magnetic shapes. Until there are no more quadrilaterals in the same half row, the next item will be moved to the next row, and so on. Thanks to the default layout of grid CSS, in some cases the design is simple. Programmers can arrange elements according to grid using only the grid template property without any additional additions. See the following specific example. In case I have three items, I want the first item to have a width of 100 pixels, so I just need to set the width of the first column to 100 pixels. Width for item 2 is 200 pixels because the second item is in the second column position. And likewise, I can set width for the third item through the third column. In case you want the third item to go to the second row, just set the total number of columns of the grid to 2. And the same thing will happen based on the grid template's rows property. I can set the height of item 1 to 250 pixels, and item 3 currently in row 2 has a height of 250 pixels. With this method, we can completely create a layout without needing anything else besides creating a grid model. Of course, it will only help you solve some simple interfaces. The order of items is arranged to coincide with the default order. How to move any item to another location. For example, in item three. If I want to move it to the fourth column, then I will use the grid column property with a value of four. It's simple, right? Just like that. If you want it to move to any column, enter the column number here. If you want to move it to another row, it has the grid rows property. 
with the main value being the row position you want item 3 to move to after moving the position. So how can we change the size of this item? In grid column, we can declare a second parameter. This parameter will have a value equal to the current position plus the number of columns you want the item to occupy. So if you want it to be equal to two columns, then we take three plus two. The second parameter in grid column will be five. The same thing will happen with grid rows. The second parameter of grid rows will be the current row position plus the number of rows you want item three to occupy. The current row position is two. The number of rows I want item three to occupy is three. So the value of the second parameter will be five. And that's how we can easily change the size of any element. Similarly, I can move the second item to the fifth column and the first row with a height value equal to two rows. Item one will move to the second column with a value equal to the two columns combined. Move to the second row and also have the value of the two rows combined. At this time, a phenomenon appears that item three has overlapped a part of item one. This is also the answer to the question, is it possible to make two items overlap each other in the grid, like the CSS position property? By default, when two items overlap each other, which item in HTML is written later? Then it will be overlaid on the remaining item. Okay? And if you want to change that, use the Z index property. By default, any item that does not declare a Z index will have a value of zero for that item's Z index. So if you want item one to overlap item three, just declare the Z index for item one as one. Similarly, for item three to overlap item one, the Z index value of item three must be greater than item one, that is two. When upgrading the level of grid usage, it is the use of tools related to grid area. At the basic level, grid area is used to replace grid columns and grid rows. For example, Grid area will now include four values. The first value represents grid row begin. The second value is grid column begin. Next is grid row end. And finally, grid column end. At this point, I just need to replace the values of grid column and grid row into grid area and complete. At this time, we do not need to use grid columns and grid rows. I will also replace grid area in item 2 and item 1. But the special ability of grid area is not like that. We have another way to use it as follows. In each item, you declare the grid area property as any value. Requirements cannot be duplicated. Then each item will have an area identifier corresponding to the values in the grid area. From now on, when you need to edit the position or size, we don't need to manipulate each item anymore, but just need to manipulate the grid container via the grid template areas property. This attribute is a class in managing the layout according to each previously defined area. Is it like what was set up? We have five columns and five rows. So grid area will have the following value. Each dot will represent a column. So I will have five dots. Since we have five rows, here I will also repeat these values five times. Now, if you want which element to be arranged in which position, just use the element's area name instead of the dot representing the corresponding column and row. For example, I want item three to be sorted into the first row and first column. So I replaced it here. Similarly, I can sort item two into the second row and second column, and item one will be moved right below item two. Everyone see? Everything becomes much simpler and easier to use because of its intuitiveness. What about resizing? It will be equally simple. If you want item two to have a stroke as large as two columns, so please replace item two with the dot representing the next column. If you want it to be longer, replace item two in the next column. Everything becomes extremely simple because we don't need to calculate anything. Everything is very easy to see. We just need to change the dots representing each specific row and column. Then that element will immediately be moved to that correct position. The most special thing about this attribute is that it will optimize the responsive design process of web programmers, if not use it. During the responsive design process, when the position and size of elements change, we must go to each specific element to edit the parameters of grid columns and grid rows. But when using grid template R, everything we need to edit will be in this property. 
To better understand this issue, let's go to the next part of the video. First example of responsive. Here I have a lot of items. Each item represents a product card. The container class is the element that is surrounding it. So if I want to arrange it, I will create a grid from the container class. I will create four columns. Each column is 250 pixels large. To push content into the middle, I have justify content center. The spacing of each column and row is 20 pixels. But now when the screen size changes, you will easily notice with smaller screens, the design is broken because there is not enough space to display all four columns. And that's when we need the responsive stage. Before talking about a very good little tip, let's do it the usual way first to see if I like this little trick or not. In the usual way, first check the current screen if the width is less than or equal to 1023 pixels, that is iPad and tablet screens. At this point, I only divide it into three columns to ensure the content can be fully displayed. Similarly, the max width is 767 pixels, which will be the size of the phone lines. Here I just divide it into two columns. So this way, everything can be solved, but it takes a lot of time. I have a better way. Instead of having to waste time changing the number of columns for each screen, change the number of columns with autofill. When using repeat in combination with autofill, the number of columns on the screen is completely automatic. The system will check to see if the current screen size will have enough room for how many columns to fit the design, so that with smaller screens the number of columns will automatically reduce to ensure your design. Always beautiful. In the next example, I have a series of elements inside the main element. According to responsive design, these elements will change size and move continuously without any rules. So how will we solve this problem? Come to CSS. As we mentioned advanced customization in part four, this is the time for us to see its outstanding advantages. For each element, I will declare a different grid area value to name the area for it. Once completed, we come to main, the element responsible for the grid container role. According to the design on the desktop screen, I will divide it into three equal columns and four rows, specifically the fourth row, where I will put the content. Instead of choosing a certain size, I'll set auto because we don't know what the content will be. After creating the mesh, use grid template area to simulate the grid frame. The three dots represent three columns. Repeat four times because it has four rows. Then just replace all specific areas into specific columns and rows. It is done. So when it comes to other screens like table and mobile, thanks to the use of grid area, then we won't need to edit each element, which simply calls the main element again. Edit column and row parameters, then use grid template area to build the layout. Thanks to that, the process of editing responsive design will be extremely concise, clean, easy to view, easy to read, and without conflicts. And that's all about grids in CSS. If you find it interesting, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel to watch many interesting videos. And if you have any questions, leave a comment and I will answer. I would also like to receive suggestions for the next topics from you. Thank you very much. See you again in the next video.